Okay, Shalom, everybody. My name is Malak, uh, and I want to do some uh, teachings about something that Yah has been telling me for like 30 something years. I ran from him, I ran from the teachings and what he was trying to show me. And uh, over the years, I couldn't help but study these things. And what it is, is about the Messiah. Okay, it's about Messiah. I'm a believer in Yahweh Shai or Jesus, uh, that he is the savior of the world. And uh, I've been born again myself and filled with the spirit. And so I've had a, a lot of years of, uh, of uh, experience in the faith. And I wanna share with you what he's told me at, at the age of around 20 years, 20 years of age. Uh, I was 16 when I was born again. <clears throat> and uh, we'll go through this as I go through the Bible study, as I go through Bible studies, because I plan on making a series out of this. So this study is about the Messiah and is there yet another Messiah to come? All right. uh, most of Christendom expects uh, there to be another Messiah coming. Uh, and I used to believe this way too, uh, not the another Messiah, excuse me, they expect Jesus to be coming back and that's the only Messiah. Uh, and uh, Yah has been showing me some things that are quite different and over the years, I've, I've had some confirmation from the things that he's been telling me uh, that are different from Christian. And I'm gonna share this. Uh, and uh, we're gonna, let's see, we're gonna go deep into the word. It's gonna be a series, like I said. Uh, so it's about the Messiah. Is there, is there another Messiah coming? Okay. I myself personally believe there is, um, but, uh, a lot of this has to do with the identity of Christ, uh, Yahweh Shai, and uh, what could change your theology is how you see his, uh, his divinity. If he's uh, in your eyesight, if he's one of three persons in the Godhead, it's gonna, your theolo theology and meditation on the word is gonna be a lot different. Uh, your idea is that there's really one Yahweh, like the Shema says, uh, that the Yahweh is one Yahweh, uh, then he, and like he said, I and the Father are one. Uh, depends on how you see that. If you see it that that there's really only one God, and when the Scripture uses uh, singular uh, personal pronouns like he and him, not they and them, but he and him, uh, and then you see that Yah is really only one person. Okay, then uh, you're gonna see theology you know, or even prophecy different. It's gonna affect. Uh, how you see uh, what's going to happen according to the scriptures. So we have to really, first thing in the Ten Commandments is uh, it is talking about uh, his identity. Okay. Uh, he speaks about it right off the top when he brings Israel out of, out of Egypt. You know, uh, and he speaks from a singular person as if he's singular, not plural. Okay. So it does affect you how you, your theology, my theology, uh, and I'll go into that in a few minutes here. I'm gonna uh, go on the screen share so I can, we can go to Eastward. I like Eastward because you're able to go into certain words, keywords, uh, and figure out what that might be, uh, what the context of the, of the verse, what, the, what it might be really meaning, okay? The words uh, translated from a lot of times from Hebrew uh, to English, the New Testament from Greek to English. And uh, so when you click on these words, a lot of times uh, you're able to figure out what the scriptures are really exactly trying to convey. All right. And minimize this up here. Okay. So the, the major thing is, is whether there's another Messiah coming. So let's, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go by the spirit on this as the spirit leads me. And uh, we're going to go to Daniel. Daniel, maximize the screen real quick. We're going to go to Daniel chapter, we're going to go to Daniel chapter seven, start off there. And we know in Daniel chapter seven, the first verses uh, uh, that Daniel speaks is about 
uh, four kingdoms that's going to rise out of the earth from that time of Daniel, uh, from what was going on back then. Babylon had taken Israel captive, and uh, and they had the, the royal house of David, and right there close to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, well, Daniel was one of them, and his three Hebrew uh, companions were all of the royal seed, from what I remember. And Daniel has this vision in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Uh, and uh, he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Uh, and he, uh, he said that he was, he saw in his vision in the night, behold, four winds of the heavens drove upon the great sea. And then when it speaks about wind, it's talking about the, the spirit, the ruach, all right? And I'm gonna look at this word just to be sure. Four winds, now, now Daniel's book is written from Aramaic, ruach, there it is right there. Uh, Hebrew 7308, uh, it means mind, spirit, and then wind. So we can, you know, the way scriptures are written, a lot of times it, 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 it's conveying a two-edged sword. So he sees four winds uh, of the heaven striving upon the great sea, most likely the Mediterranean, uh, and four great beasts. All right, make sure y'all can hear me very well. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was a lion, and the uh, first was a lion and had an eagle, had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand up on the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Oh, that's really deep right there, you know. Just the spirit of that. If, if you know where I'm coming from, those that have uh, great or very uh, lengthy uh, biblical background and studies into prophecy. This is telling us a whole lot right there. All right, if I can go back over this scripture without having to read the whole thing, let me see here. What I got out of that, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. We remember that Babylon, uh, their image, their like mascot, a representation in the scriptures is a lion. Uh, it was the head of this, uh, this whole coalition of of kings, lion, and he had eagle's wings. All right, eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings there were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, uh, and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given unto it. And I was thinking about when I saw this, the wings were there were plucked, and the, you know some scripture in Revelation about. Uh, the woman being given two wings of a great eagle to fly into her place in the wilderness. And this is future, yet future for those that are Israelites. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 speaks about Israel being uh, delivered. Okay. Uh, but uh, it says that two wings of a great eagle were given unto her that she could fly into the wilderness into a safe place. But this, this lion had eagle's wings at first, but they were plucked. And a man's heart was given unto this lion. All right, so let's go to verse five. And behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear, like to a bear. And they raised up on itself on one side and had three ribs and the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And we know that, you know, the cut to the chase, that this was a media Persia that was on, on one side. It, it, it basically two kingdoms that, basically uh, acted as one. And the bear was raised up on one side. That means I think it was Persia that really did most of the reigning and ruling when they took over Babylon, took over the kingdom from Babylon. All right, that's the second beast. And uh, remember these beasts would, would be the beast that would be in the earth until the end time. All right, and after this I beheld and lo another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Uh, of a fowl, four wings of a fowl, not an eagle. A fowl is like a chicken or something. Uh, it's a fowl, it's a bird. Maybe I know they call chickens fowl. All right, but maybe it's just another type of uh, wing. But uh, uh, four wings of a fowl. The beast had four heads. All right, the beast had four heads. This leopard had four heads, and dominion was given to it. All right. Uh, we know that this was Alexander the Great, the king, uh, the king of Greece, 
all right? They rose up to power uh, very quickly within like some, he started off like around 23 years of age and he died somewhere around 30, 33 years of age from what I remember, okay? Somewhere like that, his, his kingdom went by, his, his reign was fast within a decade. And, uh, but within that time, he took over the whole world and he had dominion, all right? Uh, we see Western culture and civilization starting right around this time right here with the reign of Greece, all right? And then verse seven, Daniel 7, 7. After this, I saw in the night vision to behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and it had, on, it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break it in pieces, stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and, and it had 10 horns, all right? Uh, and we see that this beast was the Roman Empire that was uh, that came into existence and took over from Greece right here, just much like media Persia took over from Babylon, Rome took over from Greece. So Rome is another Western nation, similar to Greece, has a lot of Edomite influence in it. And we know Edom was the twin brother of Jacob, all right? And this is when he started getting the dominion over there all right, with Greece and Rome right here in verse seven. In verse eight, I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men and the mouth speaking great things. All right, so we can look at this and, you know, I've struggled with this before right here, this little horn, all right. Uh, that would come out of this Roman Empire, and and collectively it looks like it's the it's a church, it's a church with a with a with a leader, all right, like the uh, the Pope, uh, you know. Uh, but we'll go into that later. But that little horn could also be a, a certain individual in the latter days when all of these are fulfilled in the latter days where we at today. That little horn could be a certain particular person. I beheld, verse 9, till the thrones were cast down, the ancient of days, and the ancient of days did sit. Here's the key right here, the ancient of days. Who is this man right here? All right. Now, like I said, I believe that really Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. I really do. He is Yahweh. That's why, you know, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So he basically still has his name on him when he, when he was manifested in the earth. Even though many Jews and Jewry and different people, uh, Hebrew Israelites call him by a different name, uh, Yeshua, Yahawash, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, whatever name they want to call him. I just, you know, believe the paleo may, may basically had an ah sound to it. And his name really technically probably would be accurately pronounced Yahawashai without the new vowel points and all of that that's going on in modern Jewish or Hebrew language, all right? So uh, so I beheld two of the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit. That's saying that when the thrones are cast down, the ancient of days will sit. Here's another thing right here. I beheld two of the thrones were cast down first, all right? The thrones were cast down. Let me scoot the seat a little bit more so I can get a little bit more comfortable. Beheld to the thrones were cast down, okay? Uh, and the thrones that most likely is talking about were these thrones of these four beasts because they would be ruling all the way up until the end, especially this Roman Empire right here. Okay. Uh, these thrones were cast down. How did they get cast down? That all of these things are key as to what we're going to talk about. Uh, is there another Messiah coming? All right. Uh, now, uh, before we go on, I want to put this tidbit in, and it might not be a tidbit, but I want you to, to bear with me on what Yah told me years ago. Yah told me years ago that uh, basically, you know, when I was reading the scriptures, I didn't know the Bible that well, but I've been born again. Like how I told Nicodemus, let you be born again. You should not, will not be able to see the kingdom. I was born again, and then I got filled with the spirit at the age of 20. After I got filled with the spirit, things revved up in my life, spirituality, dreams, visions. And then Yah started telling me that I was Elijah. 
the problem. Now I know that everybody, most people that have prophetic gifts and of the Holy Spirit, there's many Elijahs out there, all right? And I don't know what happened to them is the same thing that happened to me, or they just thought maybe they want to be that person and they, they're ambitious and, and they're gonna seek to be Elijah the prophet. With me, it wasn't like that. I heard the voice say, you're Elijah. And I believed it. I said, okay, if I'm Elijah, I know God, you're gonna make it, you're gonna work these things out so I can be that person you created me to be. Uh, so uh, I went on with that and I kept on walking. And then he told me later on, he said, uh, also, not only Elijah the prophet, you're God. And I thought to myself, okay, that was a little too much. So basically it kind of, I went kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on that. And I kind of, I really did exactly, I kind of rejected it without really owning up to it. Because, uh, you know, I thought that there was really only one God and how could I be God? And then I started binding devils and demons and everything. And uh, it just kept coming at me. And uh, he kept coming at me with this thing that you're somebody special. And, that's been prophesied about in the Bible. And uh, so I, I let it kind of, uh, I, you know, I mused about it in my heart and went on with my faith. Uh, and over the years, he started basically confirming a lot of things that he was showing me that this, what he told me when I was young, uh, could very well be true. And that to me, it could be very well be true. Now, now right now, I do believe all of it. I do believe what well, yeah, I told me that I am the, what is it, the forerunner. I do believe that I am uh, Allah Hayam. I'm, I'm leaving the word from in English for God because there's two Hebrew words for that word God, capital G, God. That's all, which means mighty one, or almighty. And usually when the Bible speaks and calls Yahweh all, it's talking about Yahweh, all right? It says all. Uh, I forgot what number that is in Hebrew, but when it normally it says all, it's talking about Yahweh. But when it says Allah Hayam, that could be an angel, that could be a king, that could be a, a world ruler, that could be, it could also match up with God being the true Yahweh being matched up in there some type of way, all right? Uh, so that when it says Yahweh Allah Hayam, there's more to it than just two names that is mentioning about the most high. It's, it's mentioning two names for him for a reason. We're gonna go into that too. So this will probably be a series of videos, all right? But I, I wanted to bring that across. I want you to, you know, to, to go into prayer with me about this because I've been in the prayer about this for, with myself and with others. But uh, we're gonna see because if you are sending another Messiah, it's, right, it's written in the word. Everything can be confirmed in the word. All right, we're gonna go through these scriptures. So we starting here at, John, at Daniel seven. So the thrones were cast down. So somebody, something happened when these thrones were cast down before the ancient of days did sit. Now I believe that this person, this ancient of days is not what some people would say that believe in a Trinity. They would say, this is the, the father, okay? This ancient of days to me is Yahweh Shai. And the reason why he's Yahawashai, I think it, this is Yahawashai because it says ancient of days. Ancient of day and night, sun coming up, the sun going down, stuff like that. All right. If this was your, the father that never came down in the flesh, all right, according to the Trinity doctrine, it would say, if this was the father, it would say eternal of days. It wouldn't be ancient. He, he's eternal of days. All right. So this person right here is ancient of days, not eternal. That means he was around in ancient times and he lived days and nights and all of that on the earth, all right? He was around from ancient times and he lived days and nights on the earth, all right? Now, Yahweh the Father, uh, Yahweh created days and nights. Uh, he's more than ancient, he's eternal. Uh, living, you know, not just days, all right? So this has to be Yahweh shot. So he shows up after the thrones are cast down and is there, is there precepts on that? Yeah, in the book of Acts, we're gonna come right back here. The book of Acts chapter three, in verse, uh, Let 
Let's see. Is it X check? Uh, okay. Acts chapter 3, verse 20. I thought it was there. And he and he will send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Acts chapter 3, verse 20. All right. He will send. When is he going to send Jesus Christ back? Which was preached unto the Jews. He wouldn't preach, he was preached unto the Gentiles too. But Jesus came to the Israelites, all right? Uh, he didn't go, he didn't step foot on uh, any heathen land from what we see in the scriptures except Egypt. He went into Egypt to hide from Herod. All right, Acts 3.21, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things. All right, so the heavens must keep him up there until the times of the restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So there, it's in the Old Testament how this thing is going to, how this thing is going to wind up right there. So it's in the Old Testament through the prophets, the holy prophets, all right, that spoke since the world began, all right? And the restitution of all things is really a restoration, all right? Reconstitution. Uh, he said Elijah will first come and restore all things, all right? Uh, so let's go back to where we was at. So that's had this ancient of days has to be Jesus or Yahawashai, however, whatever name you want to call him by. All right, I choose to call him Yahawashai most of the time by his Hebrew identity. Okay. So I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. All right, his throne was like the fiery flame, fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books was open. All right, so we know that Yahweh Shai, according to the scripture, is the is the judge. The Father or God has appointed him, Yah has appointed him to be judge to be the judge of the living and the dead, all right? So that explains that right there. So that has to be him, because the books was open and the judgment was set, all right? And I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, but yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time, all right? So he comes, on the scene, Yahweh Shai, and uh, this beast or this little horn, I think, right up here. All right, is is dealt with pretty much. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a little, for a season in time. All right, and I saw verse thirteen. Here's what I was trying to get to. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. So this one like the Son of Man cannot, you know, there's not the same person, but many people that want to make Jesus the, uh, make him the, the one, the, you know, uh, I think Trinity thing, they want to do the Trinity thing and uh, they're waiting on Jesus to come back. He uh, died and went to heaven. Not saying he won't come back, but they thinking that it's gonna, it's all about only Jesus doing things. All right. Uh, well, right here is there's two different persons going on right here. If this is, if this is Jesus, this is Jesus. You know, that's that's that you know that's kind of redundant. But this one like the Son of Man would have to be what would be a latter-day Messiah that comes on the scene like the Elijah the prophet that comes on the scene and he lives a life and Yah takes him and uh, takes him to heaven. And he, they bring him to Jesus, Yahweh All right, they bring him up there to him. Ancient of days, wherever he's at, parked at in the heavens, in the sky or whatever, they bring him to him. But it's kind of like a rapture. 
So the first place of, of a rapture that I see in the scriptures uh, uh, concerning the latter days is right here. It's one person, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. And they and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. All right, they brought him near before him. And this is a mystery because uh, for some reason, Yah made this a mystery, mysterious thing. And I'm gonna show you another reason why he made it a mysterious thing. Look at this, Jeremiah. And most, most churches, they're not talking about these things. You know, We'll just wait on Jesus and after the rapture, then the great tribulation happens and we don't have to worry about that because we'll be gone, hallelujah. No, I think we better study these things, all right? Because what if it don't happen like that? Okay, so we need to be ready. We need to have our minds right uh, concerning biblical prophecy. All right, so we see in the restoration of the children of Israel in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 18, starting there. It says, for thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built up on, on, on her own heap and the palace shall remain after the manner there. Many people believe that the restoration or seeming restoration that didn't happen over in the land of Israel within the last 70 years uh, with Jews from Europe uh, being allowed to go and live on the Holy Land over there, that that's the restoration, that, that that's what this is talking about right here. But I beg to differ and as many people that have studied that are really truthful, that are studying scriptures for years and know what they're talking about, will say the same thing, that that's not the restoration. Uh, and there's many reasons, very good reasons why that couldn't be the restoration. Because it says right here, he's going to destroy the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city should be built up on our own heat in the palace. And that palace got to be the temple. Is there a temple there yet? No. All right. Are all the tribes being restored or been restored? No. The only ones we see are what's, what people that claim to be Judah and Levi. We don't even see people claiming to be Benjamin. All right. And uh, the last people that were there in the land were Judah. Benjamin and Levi, all right? And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, they shall not be few. Um, the number of Jews that they say that exist in this world, 16 million, is I don't, I don't even think that that's the number that this is gonna be right here. This is gonna be a great number of people, all right? They will not be few, he said. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. All right, they will not be a nation of just only 16 million people. And it's gonna be millions and millions and millions of folks, okay? Their, their children also should be as a four time. It's another thing, as they were beforehand. All right, now, now, if we go back in history and we look at the way Egypt was and look at uh, before the, uh, the advancement of what, what, what we call uh, the uh, Renaissance period that happened around the 15th, 16th century modern day times, we will see that most of these Hebrews were people that kind of favored me, all right? If you, if you get a good look at me and you go look at some, some icon pictures, iconic pictures from, from uh, Israelites that were living in Russia or in uh, different parts of the Europe because they did live there for a long time. Uh, and they were ruling in Russia, Europe, and, Spain and Portugal, uh, you will notice people that favor exactly like Malak that you see on the screen, all right? Their children also should be as a foretime. They were gonna be just like that again. That means they have not ceased to exist. They still around. If you look at me, I'm still, I'm one of these people, all right? One of these folks that was, uh, that was, that was Jews before they brought us over here and made us slaves and we became Christian. All right, Spain and Portugal had many of my, my people there. And um, the, the Pope gave a papable in the 14 or 1500s uh, that if these Jews that lived in Spain and Portugal, these black Jews or Negro Jews would not convert to, to Christianity, to Catholicism, they would have their children sold off of the, off of the, out of those countries. And that's what happened. They start selling our children. Uh, off away from the parents that would not convert to Christianity, they were Jews. And they sold them into slavery. That's how we got here. All right, many people, it's not talked about very much. All right, but that's, uh, that's, that's history. You find some books like that, 
they're going to tell you, those history books are going to tell you that these, uh, that these Jews that were in Spain and Portugal uh, before around the slave trade were Negroes, okay? Uh, their children also should be as aforetime, and that congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And this is one thing about my people, we've always been oppressed throughout history. When we fell from God, when we kept, we did not keep his commandments, his, his covenant, we would be oppressed. And, and, and I know the European Jews, as many, there's a lot of us in within jury, modern day jury, but they don't look like me, you know, but they have that blood. They have the Jacob's blood in them, okay? So I'm not gonna say they don't have Jacob's blood. And there's some that don't, all right? That's been, uh, what is it called, proselytized or they've converted to Judaism and they're basically as, you know, as Roman as you can get, okay? Or Edomite as you can get. And they call themselves by the name of Jews. And, and God doesn't cast people out to come to him, to come to his land, the strangers. He allows the strangers as well as the, the true, true children to live there. And that's all throughout the, uh, the Torah, all right? But the covenant without those true children, this thing won't come to an end, okay? It'll be just like it is today. We're still waiting on uh, the Messiah. The Jews in modern day Jewry are waiting on, guess what, the Messiah. And many Christians will say, well, he already came. All right, but the Jews back then and our, and Jesus day and time and the Jews when we were Jews in Spain and Portugal were still waiting on this same Messiah. And that's what we're talking about. Is there another Messiah to come? Is there another Messiah to come? All right, so that's where we're at. So uh, their nobles shall be, a, be of themselves. And that's the reason why I'm saying this right here, of themselves, not of another people. Because you got some, uh, that are converts to Judaism, and that are, they are not uh, genetically linked to Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, they might be linked to Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Some of them, Abraham, Isaac, and Edom, and then some of them might have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they don't look like because because you got you got Jews in China that went out there and mixed in with the regular population, but they kept their identity. And they look like Chinese people. And believe it, there's some that's converted. And there you go, voila. All right. But, they, but their nobles, that means their royalty, should be of the original people. And they're going to be just like they were before. They got scattered to the nations. All right. So he wants those original ones. And these are the ones that suffer the most slavery, Jim Crow, oppression, uh, hated of all nations. All right. Because of their skin color, because of their woolly hair. All right, when, and, and they don't call them by their original name, they call them by derogatory names, all right? Because if they don't, if they call them by their real name, you might have to honor them if you believe in that God, that most high God, okay? And their nobles should be of themselves and their governor, this is key right here, their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And this is at the restoration, y'all, all right? Uh, is this doing after the rapture of the church? Is it before the rapture of the church? All right, this question we need to answer here because there's gonna be a restoration of the true Israelites. Is it gonna be during the, the rapture or after the rapture? All right, so their governor shall proceed from the midst of them and I will cause him, watch this. I will cause him to draw near. Now remember we are at Daniel chapter seven where um, this uh, one like the son of man, one like Jesus, I guess. Uh, is caught up into heaven, into to the throne, and brought before the ancient of days, which is Yahweh. All right, so this has to be this man right here. I, and I will cause him to draw near. And that right there is Hebrews 71, 26. The word is karab. It means to approach. Now, as we go back to that scripture again, in Daniel chapter 7, let me see if I can skip there real quick and come right back. Daniel chapter 7. All right, verse 13, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. And they brought him, watch this, near before him. There's, a, there's that key word. I want you to cause him to draw near in Je Jeremiah uh, chapter 30. I will cause him to draw near. And right here it says, and they brought him near before him. 
that word near right there is is uh is, is karab again i think it's karab uh to approach to come near to draw near let's go back to jeremiah jeremiah 30 verse uh verse 21 and uh this governor shall proceed from the midst of them, the returning exiles, and I will cause him to draw near. That's the same word again, draw near. Let's see what that is. Karab, same word, uh, almost the same word, a similar word. Um, was written in Daniel is from the Aramaic, so sometimes they, they translate the Aramaic into the Strong's Concordance too, uh, but it's the same word. Uh, to approach, cause to bring forth near, uh, to draw near, all right? And he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, say if you help. All right. And you should be my people and I will be your Allah higher. All right. So this is the latter day restoration, all right? In which we're coming up on is really coming close to this, all right? Because Israel, many of these people, uh, and not all Negroes, but Many of the people uh, that's been scattered, including the Native American, uh, recognizing the true Native American, excuse me, uh, recognizing um, that they are who they are and they're starting to return to the covenant. Okay, but right here it says, I saw in the night vision the whole one light, the Son of Man. So we can say right here, like Jesus. This scripture also, Yahweh Shai fulfilled because he also came to the throne of heaven when he res resurrected. All right, he went back to heaven and the clouds to heaven and came to the Father. But was that the ancient of days? It's partially fulfilled there. So the total fulfillment is not Yahweh, it's not Jesus. All right, he's a partial fulfillment of the scripture. All right, many people will say, no, Jesus is never a partial fulfillment. Oh, yes, he is. Much like uh, when Yah told Abraham about the, uh, the 400 years of affliction. And in Israel, Jacob goes into Egypt and his people are there for around 215 years altogether, all right? But that was a partial fulfillment of the latter day 400 years of affliction. But they weren't even there in that Egypt for 400 years. So did Yah lie? Did, did we get the word wrong? Somebody made a mistake and, and put 400 down instead of 215? No, it's a partial fulfillment in Egypt. A thousand years ago with Moses delivering them out of there. Likewise, the 400 years of affliction is still yet to be fulfilled. And I think we have just fulfilled it just recently of a people that was carried into a place that from the time they got there, they was afflicted until the time of 400 years is over. With. And at that time, he says, I will judge the nation that they serve. So if that's so, then we're looking at maybe this thing happening right here in America. All right, right here in America, where, they, where these slaves are bought here, start to be, become, you know, uh, afflicted here uh, in year, what is it, 1619. And then in 2019, right after that, we have a plague that starts out judging not only America, but judging all of these lands over there overseas. And it is supposed to have come from Wuhan, China, someplace in China. All right. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's basically it went to Rome and uh, Italy and it did a damage in all, the, all of these lands. And everybody's now getting a uh, a vaccine to try to keep themselves safe from it, all right? But I see that as a judgment that's coming upon the nations uh, after that 400 years. And it, notice it started around 2019, right after the 400 year anniversary, all right? So the son of man, all right, really is a latter day prophecy. But there's somebody, another Messiah, another person that's coming, all right? This, he's the one like the son of man, like him, all right, came with the clouds of heaven. And this is in the scripture. He came to the ancient of days, who is Yahweh Shah. All right, came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And that was given, verse 14, and that was given him dominion. But given who dominion? The ancient of days, did he get the dominion? Jesus, that's in the heavens? No, it didn't say that. It was given this man, one like the son of man, all right, that was giving him dominion, 
All right, let's look at this dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. All right, now you notice it didn't say should worship him, but they should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. All right, and Daniel, who was very wise, because in the book of uh, Ezekiel, when Yah is talking to the, the, the I think it's the, the king of Persia, no, excuse me, the king of Tyre. I think that's in Ezekiel chapter 28, where he's talking to this king of Tyre who was an angel, who was a, who was a spirit, an angelic spirit. And he told this angel that he was wiser or was the, either the prince or the angel. He told him that he was wiser than Daniel. Daniel was a very wise individual. And Daniel's getting the, given the vision to understand. And Daniel says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. The question is, was, was the Jews in this day and time waiting on the Messiah? Yes, they were. The Jews from the very beginning of their, of their uh, existence as a people were waiting on the Messiah, all right? Uh, so Daniel knew something about the Messiah. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me, made me know the interpretation of these things. All right. But he right here said he was grieved in the midst of in his spirit in the midst of his body, the visions of his head troubling. So basically that's kind of doing for a week. Okay. Because he saw this man in the ancient of days and probably recognized him as one of the son of the gods that was exalted and glorified. So this is Yahweh Shai glorified. All right, but who was this man right here? One like the son of man. All right, who was he? So that's what we're talking about. Is there another Messiah to come? So I'm gonna go, I'm going to go uh, to Daniel chapter nine, where the angel Gabriel visits Daniel to tell him what's gonna happen to his people in the latter days. So Daniel was asking a lot of questions. You know, he got these visions and he was really wanting to know. He wanted to put it together, all right? Uh, verse 29, verse 20, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yahweh Ma'alahayim. Now remember this Yahweh Ma'alahayim, the reason why he didn't just say Yahweh, all right? He said, Yahweh, my Allah, I am. There's something, there's a mystery to that. We're going to go into that later again, like I said before. All right. For the holy mountain of God, of my God, my Allah, I am. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talk with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. All right, give him skill. So Daniel was a man of understanding. He was wise, okay, like we said before. At the beginning of that supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So right here, it goes to show you, if you want to really want to be greatly beloved of Yah, get understanding, knowledge and understanding of his word and love it, and guess what? You'll be a person that's considered by God greatly beloved, okay? He was greatly beloved, okay? Um, let's see. Study to show yourself approved on Allah, I am a workman and need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? That's uh, Paul's letter to Timothy. Okay, so verse 9, Daniel 9, 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. 70 weeks. Now we know Jeremiah spoke about 70 years that they would be in Babylon. So this is probably a play. This is kind of a parallel to the 70 years that uh, Israel would be in Babylon before they would be allowed to return and rebuild their temple and be a people again. So 70 weeks, but it's saying 70 weeks. Now, the 70 weeks has a lot to do with weeks of years and stuff that has to do with jubilees, Sabbath years where you let the land rest and all of that is dealing with that. So I would say more than even those things, the jubilee is big time. 
because jubilee means you go back in the year jubilee jubilee to your inheritance whether it was sold away or given away you go back to that inheritance after that jubilee so 70 weeks all right are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, make an end of sins, to make uh, reconciliation for iniquity. Uh, again, sins and iniquities are diff two different things. Yahweh Shai died for our sins, but it didn't say anything about iniquities, all right? So there's a sin, there's iniquities. If there's two messiahs, could one be dealing with sin, which we see with the with the Passover lamb, which eventually became Yahweh Shai, and could the other one be dealing with iniquity, which we uh, which which is yet to come, which is fulfilled in the uh, the Hebrew feast called uh, Atonement, Day of Atonement, where we have two goats. The lowest goat takes away sin, is is, is slain for the sins of the people. And the other goat is a live goat called the Azazel goat, uh, which is the goat of escaping, the escape goat, all right, would deal with the iniquity of the children of Israel, all right? Could it be that? That's what I believe and that's what I've studied and that's what God has shown me. All right, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision, the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Mashiach the Prince, all right, unto Messiah the Prince, shall be seven weeks. Seven weeks. And so there's a comma right there with seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Okay, so that's two counts right there. Many people try to add the seven weeks, and the three score and two weeks, which three score and two weeks, a score is 20 years. Three score is 60, and two, that's 62 weeks. Many people add the seven weeks plus the, six, the 62, come up with 69 weeks. But if the angel wanted us to do it like that, he would have just said 69 weeks. All right, he didn't have us counting like this for just no reason at all. All right, so that's, there's two count periods for Mashiach, the prince, and Messiah the prince, right there. That word prince is Nagi. It means literally a commander civil, military, or religious commander. So really you say military or religious. So if he's a Messiah for Israel, he's gotta be definitely both of these, military and religious. All right, uh, captain, I really don't have to go through that, prince, chief ruler. So basically it's two time periods he's given to come, seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Verse 26, and after three score, after that 60 and two weeks, that the comma, after that comma, uh, that spoke about the seven weeks verse. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, all right? But not for himself. So we know, most scholars know that this had to do most likely that believe in, believe in Christ or Jesus, know that this, this prophecy had to do with him. That three score and two weeks, when you add it together, comes up to like 430 something years, all right? From the time that they was allowed to leave by Cyrus, the king of Persia, uh, to go back and rebuild their temple. Uh, then basically 430, like 34 years, 434 years later, uh, Messiah was cut off. That means Jesus was, was crucified, all right? So if you can find the exact year that Cyrus uh, gave the commandment, the exact year in history. Then you can find that probably the exact year Yahweh Shai died. Okay, because this was a prophecy. After three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. All right. So basically, we see one of these messiahs um, that were here. It's two messiahs, obviously, because it's two time periods. All right. One of these messiahs was Yahweh Shai. He was cut off after 434 years after the commandment went forth to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. But what about this one that comes after seven weeks? Well, the rule is, is that whenever you see a prophecy in the scripture, it's going to tell you the, last, the latter end first. The major fo focal point is going to be on the latter, on the latter days. So there's two Messiah princes 
those two messiahs, all right? And right here, the second one that comes in three score and two weeks is called Messiah right here. Then call him Prince, exactly. But right up here called both on Messiah princes. Okay. So we know we know Yahweh was really anointed, he was the Christ. That word Messiah translates in the Greek as <clears throat> Christ. Okay. So Yahweh he was a Messiah of Christ. He was cut off, died on the cross for his people. All right. And the people of the prince that shall come. So who is this prince? That word again is the Nagid. All right. People of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. It's talking about the Roman prince. All right. And we know that Rome did this under uh, General Titus, Vespasian's son, I think it was. Uh, and uh, uh, Titus came in and destroyed the, the city and the sanctuary. In the end, there was with a flood until the end of the war, desolations are determined. All right. So basically, there's two messiahs right here, because there's two time periods. And we haven't seen this seven week period fulfilled yet. But it doesn't say this person gets cut off. It says the one that comes after three score and two weeks gets cut off. And we know that was Yahweh shot. So if there is two messiahs in which this scripture is saying really two, then one of them doesn't get cut off. One of them doesn't die at her. Okay, one of them does, one of them doesn't. The one that doesn't is the one that comes after seven weeks, which hasn't happened yet. Okay, the three score and two weeks has happened. Okay, so uh, what I, the story I've been getting, have been getting from Yah is that I was this person right here. That comes after seven weeks. Okay, this Mashiach Prince. And the reason why I'm talking this and get putting myself open to ridicule is because over the years, I've come to see Yah's word as prophecy and what he says to me is true. And he started confirming these things. Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll go into that, how he's been confirming these things, all right? But uh, that he said, this Mashiach Prince is me right here. All right. Now, we know of two gospels being proclaimed in the scriptures. Not everybody knows what those two gospels. Most people only know of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul speaks about one of the churches being corrupted by another Jesus and then by another, another gospel. And yes, if it ain't of Yah, if somebody preaches another gospel, it's basically of Satan. If there's another Jesus, guess what? It's of Satan. All right. But there's really only one true gospel since the time of Christ. But there's another gospel that's to be proclaimed in the latter days. All right. And I'm going to take you there. And it's going to be Revelation chapter 12. Now, about four years ago, it's 2021 now, and around 2017, there was a sign that showed up in the, in the, in the heavens, in the stars. Uh, and this was the sign right here. It was miraculous and many people were talking about it because it had never showed up perfectly like Revelation 12, 1, before. So we, everybody knew something was going on because Yah, who knows everything, gave this to John the Revelator to prophesy this right here in Revelation 12, verse 1, that would be in the latter days. And this sign that would show up, but basically should, at least for those that understand what's going on in scripture, and also that this person is talking about, because it's talking about a particular person right here, uh, they would catch on to what's going on. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. All right, so this is Israel. This is this woman represents Israel. All right, and and it also goes back to Joseph having his dream about uh, he told his father and his brothers that he had a dream. He was constantly dreaming these dreams that were prophetic, and Yah was showing him who he was and what he was going to do. And uh, he told his brothers and his father that he saw the the sun, moon, and the eleven stars bow down to him and do obeisance to him. And his brothers were already tired and fed up of these prophetic dreams that had them bowing down to him. 
all right? And uh, so this right here uh, kind of points back to Joseph's dream. When, and eventually Joseph was glorified. He went through some stuff, all right? His brothers helped him go through it because of their jealousy and envy of him, envy, the envious nature of him. And he wound up in Egypt and he went through some years of, of, of affliction. And then from the, from the dungeon, Yah caused him to be exalted to Pharaoh's throne, okay? To Pharaoh's throne. And guess what? His brothers came from Canaan and eventually bowed down, did obeisance to him, like the dream said, what happened? So this right here is kind of a, a play on that right there, that this would be similar, that there's gonna be another person uh, that's gonna be exalted, all right, from Israel that basically was rejected by his people, all right? There would be another person. And this, would not, this is not pointing back to Yahweh Shai. It might be pointing to Joseph because right here, it's talking about what's gonna happen in the latter days. And uh, many people that don't know Revelation too well uh, don't realize that in Revelation chapter one, all right? It says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. That word surely means in the future. At this time, Yahweh Shai gave this revelation to John. He was already exalted in the heavens. So it was a vision John saw on the Isle of Patmos of things that must surely come to pass. Not had already come to pass, all right? It was shortly come to pass, all right? So this is in the future, in the latter days, most likely, all right? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven and woman. And so we know that that's Israel, all right? Similar to Joseph's dream, uh, Revelation 12, 2, and she being with child, okay, she's pregnant, crying and travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and 10 horns and the seven crowns upon his heads. Now this goes back to Daniel chapter seven, uh, verse five, verse six, I believe it is, or verse seven, where it speaks about this dragon, this beast that represents the Roman empire, all right? That has seven heads and 10 horns. Uh, he had iron claws and all of that uh, in Daniel. But this one right here says it's a great red dragon. That red right there, kind of corresponds to what we know of Edom, because we know that the Roman Empire descends from Edom or Esau. So it's a great red dragon in the latter days having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads, all right? So basically the Edomite nations, but this is a sign that showed up in the heavens in 2017. Now they blocked out the great red dragon, but most people saw uh, the woman uh, that represents Israel. They blocked out the great red dragon, but it was up there, all right? Verse four, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and they cast him to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. All right. Now, uh, I come from a family, my father was an evangelist, and I've said this before on another video, but this is a new series of videos we're doing now. And my father was uh, anointed, very, very powerfully anointed, very powerful. Uh, a lot of miracles and signs and wonders were done in his ministry. Uh, around the time I was born, he was at his height of his ministry. And uh, before I was born, uh, my father and mother had a daughter, their first child. And after that, they couldn't have any more children for se seven years, I believe six or seven years. And uh, the Lord, yeah, I showed my father what it was. As the doctor told my mother, it was her tubes were too thin or something like that to have to bring forth a child. And he told her what it was. He saw it in the spirit that it was a, like a dragon-like type, alligator dragon type creature in the spirit that was eating up her eggs. He drew it on a piece of paper and showed it to her. And then he prayed for her right then and there, laid his hand on her stomach. And she said it felt like somebody knocked the wind out of her stomach, like somebody punched her. And from that time on, she was able to conceive and she started being, bringing forth children. And the first child she brought forth was my older sister, who's about a year and a half older than I am. And then she eventually, when they came to me, my father, you know, I was in the womb still. He prayed that I would be a boy. And he, if I was, he would dedicate me to Yahweh all the days of my life. So when I was born, I was a boy and born with six fingers on each hand. And, uh, and my mother had him tied off, you know, but, um, but 
uh, he didn't name me. All right, that my mother and a, and a nurse named me, but most of his, his oh, not most of them, all of his sons, other sons, he put his name on them. So he allowed Yah to name me. All right. Uh, so, but this right here, this dragon wanted to devour this child as soon as it was born. So that there was a dragon trying to eat my mother's eggs. All right, and trying to keep some somebody from being born, a dragon spirit by eating her eggs. Up. All right. And verse five, and she brought forth a man child. Now this is the key right here, a man child. Now we just saw that this is not Jesus that it's talking about, because this is what's going to happen shortly, not what happened already in history. This was these things must which must happen shortly in the future, in the latter days. So she brings forth a man child. So when the science showed up in 2017, it was saying basically that this that Israel as a nation had brought forth a man child or was bringing forth a man child what does this mean a little baby no it's talking about a man right here all right a man and then a child all right now remember yahweh shai spoke about who was the greatest in the kingdom and he took a little child and set him in the midst of them all right and he said whosoever shall humble himself as this little child the same as the greatest in the kingdom all right, so it's a man humbling himself as a child with God and let Yah lead him wherever he wants to go, wherever he wants to take him, regardless of his situation. All right, well, she brought forth a man child, all right, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, we just saw in Daniel chapter seven, one came with the clouds of heaven, right? Uh, a son of the one like the son of man. Uh, and that was giving him dominion and authority and all of that, that all nations should serve him, all right? And it, and it doesn't seem to be Jesus. And this right here is not, is not Jesus. This is a man child who is, the, who is the rule and who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And this is, again, this is not Jesus because these are things that shortly must come to pass, not what had already happened. That all nations with a rod of iron and her child was called up unto Allah Hayyam into his throne. So again, remember the man, uh, the one like the son of man in Daniel chapter seven, verse 13, came with the clouds of heaven and they brought him near before the ancient of days. So he was called up unto heaven. So here again, as a sort of like a rapture because that word caught up is harpazo. And it's the same word in first Thessalonians that Paul uses for the rapture where, we, where everybody calls the rapture. And that word is also harpazo that is used right there too in first Thessalonians that speaks about the so-called rapture. So what we see here is a man child being called up, rapture. Now, if it was a collective, it would have said it, all right? But many try to say, but they don't understand these scriptures. Many try to say that this man child is a collective of people. He represents a collective of people, all right? Much like that one, like the son of man that came to the ancient of days in Daniel chapter, Seven is really uh, a, a singular person that represents a collective people of the saints. He's not, he's not himself many people like a collective. He is one person that represents the saints. So in the same way, this man child is like that. One person that represents the saints. And I'm going to prove something to you. I'm going to show this to you in Micah chapter 2. All right. And he's talking about Micah chapter two, verse 12. He's talking about this uh, restoration of, the, of Jacob, the house of Jacob in the latter days, all right? Because remember all scripture points to the latter end with partial fulfillments taking place every now and then within that time till we get to the latter end, all right? So at the latter end, he said, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee, all of thee, not some, not just one tribe, two tribes, you know, you're gonna get all 12 tribes, all of you. And I will and I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Bozrah, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by the by the reason of multitude of men. Watch this, verse 13. The breaker has come up before them. All right, so basically it's talking about a person is called right here, the breaker. He's come up before them. Come up before who? The rest of these people, the rest of the tribes of Israel. So he's only one person. 
has come up before them. All right, that word breaker, let me look at it real quick. Hebrews 6555. All right, the word is parats. It means to break out. So by, somebody is going to break out of Satan's hold on God's people. What do you mean break out? That means he's going to literally break out of here. I mean, you know, you know, some people call it the glass ceiling, and I believe that we are on, a, on what seems to be a flat earth. All right, it's not like the, the mainstream culture has told us it's a round ball floating through space at incredible speeds and spinning at incredible, no, it's not like that. We are on a, just like the ancients saw it, there was a flat earth with a dome, all right? A dome, a, a, a firmament that is clear and it's very hard. All right, and that right above that is water. And above that, you know, the, the, the water might be inside the firmament, all right? But Yah's throne is on top of that up in the heavens. All right, his feet are resting above it. All right, so, so this person would break out and go up there. Just like we saw that one like the Ancient of Days would basically be caught up to Yah's throne. And we see that in the book of Revelation right here. But that man child, he's gonna break out. What calls him the breaker? All right. The breaker has come up. Come up means it's a law. That's Hebrew 59 27. It means to ascend. There he is right there. So basically, what some people call rapture. This is here's the same person. It has to be the same one that we're looking at in Revelation chapter 12, and the same one that we saw in Daniel chapter 7. All right, he's going to ascend. All right, to be high. Uh, what else does it say in here? To ascend up, uh, to ascend up at once, to break, break the day, to bring up, to carry up, to cast up, to climb up. All right, so this breaker has to be that man child we talked about. It's Micah's way of seeing it. He saw it too in the latter days. Yeah, most, all of the prophets saw the latter days. All of them, okay, like we just saw in the scripture of Levitical, all right. Uh, all of the prophets saw the latter days. So this breaker comes up before them. And then we see what it looks like. What is that? Two dots is a colon, right? It's not a semicolon, it's a colon. All right. And they have broken up. Now, now it's talking about the rest of them. All right. A hundred, most likely 144,000, all right. They have broken up. The ones coming behind him have broken up, just like the breaker, the one up here did. And some people say, well, that was Jesus. No, Jesus has already been in the heavens. All right. <laughs> All right. So remember, we're talking about two messiahs. Okay. He's already up there. And basically, this is what, the, the, obviously, what Yah, Yahweh wanted to happen. He wanted to be an example to his people so that they would eventually do what he did. So here we see that they're copying him. They're breaking up, sending up to heaven. And as you only do this by favor with Yah. All right, they had broken up. That means before they died, they didn't die. This person didn't die. He broke up and went up to heaven. He didn't die. They had broken up and had passed through the gate. It didn't say that he went up, come up. It says they had broken up and passed through the gate. All right, it didn't say they went up to ascend up to heaven and are gone out by it. All right, so he breaks up and goes up to heaven. They broke out, get out of the gate. That means the gate of captivity of the children of Israel. So basically, somebody's got to come on the scene and be this Elijah that Yahweh Shai spoke about in Matthew chapter 17, 11, that he said, Elijah shall truly first come and restore all things. And that Elijah has to be this breaker. Okay. So somebody's got to be that person. And many people would think, oh, it's my pastor. Uh, he's not going to be. This person, this breaker, is not going to be somebody that's well known in the religious, uh, how can I put it, uh, from what the scriptures say. He won't be an evangelical uh, person. Okay, like we see on Pete, uh, what is it called? Uh, Praise the Lord. Is that, what is it? Pete, uh, TV, TVN or whatever, Turner Broad, or whatever it's called. Uh, the, the, the Christian network or whatever, you know, all, all of these channels that have uh, uh, superstar preachers. He won't be one of them, okay? He'd be somebody that's from 
uh, the house of Israel, the original house that is not recognized anymore. Okay, that he, God uses to restore the ones that have lost their heritage so that they can return home because they've been oppressed and they've been deceived by a religion that was supposed to be correct and true, but have led them astray called Christianity. All right, so this breaker has to be that one that comes out, that other Messiah that Daniel spoke about that comes after seven weeks, okay? So we got two messiahs. So the one that comes after seven weeks is spoken about through all throughout the scriptures. So let's go back to and see what happens to this son, this man child that's in Revelation, if God willing, if God's willing for me to do that. All right. Amen. So the woman was he, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. He was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto Allah and to his throne, all right? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she, to a place where she has a place prepared of God, that they shall feed her there a thousand two hundred three score days. And there was war in heaven, all right? Now watch this. There was war in heaven, because remember that man child was caught up up there. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. Now we come to the point of, of who is this man child in actuality? Why is he so special? Why is he called the breaker in one place, the one like the son of man in another place? All right, why is this man so special? Well, obviously this man probably gives his life all the way to God where he's just only living his life for the Lord and the scriptures had to speak about. It. All right, and that's what we're here. That's what I'm here to do is speak about this man child, and who he is and what Yah has revealed to me who this man child is. And because I'm really of interest to find this thing out because Yah told me I was this person, okay? He told me I was this person years ago. That's over 30 something years ago, y'all, all right? And I rebelled against it. Like Jonah, I rebelled against Yah telling the prophesy to Nineveh. And we can, what happened to Jonah kind of sort of happened to me, all right? So there was war in heaven. I didn't get swallowed up by fish. But I was in the belly of a beast, all right? All right, we, we, we'll go through that later, all right? And there was war in heaven, all right? Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. Why is it that this, when this man child goes up there, there's war in heaven, and then Michael he fights against the, uh, the dragon? And remember this dragon represents also the Roman Empire or Rome and the Edomites, okay? So basically Satan is ruling over uh, the Edomites and the Romans, all right? And so that right there should make you, Christianity should now all of, all of a sudden become suspect to you. If Satan is ruling over the very people that took Christianity and start spreading it all over the world, all right? And these people prosper more than anybody and everybody knows they're Gentiles, all right? That makes Christianity suspect. Well, this is what I do, I'm gonna say it right off the top. Jesus is what our people, my people that were Jews in Spain and Portugal in the 14, 1500s. Jesus is what my people as Jews did not believe in, all right? And Yah allowed that to happen so we could get Jesus. Because without Jesus, you don't get the kingdom, all right? Let me say that again. Without Jesus, you don't get the kingdom. He is the king of the kingdom. Now, I did not say without Jesus, you go to hell. I didn't say that, all right? Because the rich young ruler asked him, what good thing what must I do in order to have eternal life? He didn't say the kingdom, to have eternal life. And Jesus said, well, what do you, what's the, what do you keep the commandments? Basically the rich young ruler basically said, I do, I've kept these, uh, these last six that you spoke about, about dealing with your neighbor. I've kept them since my youth up. And uh, six of those commandments, you know, uh, and how would I say, okay, do that, you will live. You should, you should live. And he said, you know, all these I've done for my youth up, what lack I yet? And Yahweh Jesus told him, well, this is what you can do. He was a rich man. He said, you know, sell all that you have, give to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. The rich young ruler was left away sad, you know, because he didn't want to do it. And Yahweh commented on him and said, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom not eternal life, 
but the kingdom. So there's a difference between kingdom and eternal life. But most people that believe that, like the Jews that keep the commandments, may have eternal life, even though they don't believe in Yahweh All right. But what they, if you believe in Yahweh and you keep his commandments, so both of those go together the commandments and Yahweh you get the kingdom. All right. So that's the reason why our people were allowed to come in. Yeah, allowed us to be treated the way we were treated because we had eternal life, but we were the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he, we were the ones that he was giving the kingdom first, okay? He was gonna give the kingdom to us first. So if we wind up just getting eternal life and the heathen get, get the kingdom, that's backwards, you know? <laughs> and it's not spoken about in the, in the, in the, in the commandments that he's gonna give the, the, the heathen uh, authority over his chosen people in, in, in the world to come. It's not in there. The, the, the nation that's, that stays alive forever and rules forever and is not ashamed forever is Israel. As Isaiah 45 says, uh, it says, but Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. They shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. It doesn't say that about the other nations. Israel is that nation that's saved with everlasting salvation. So what he did, he chastened, chastised his son, Israel. He bought us from Spain and Portugal on ships, and we went through some to give us Jesus so we could have the possibility of getting the kingdom, not just eternal life. All right, so I want to make that clear. All right, so you can have the, you, you can keep the commandments as a Jew and have eternal life because the commandments will give you eternal life because you'd be doing the Father's will by keeping his commandments. Or you can become a Christian and believe in Jesus without doing the commandments. Guess what you got? You still got eternal life. That doesn't mean you got the kingdom. And what the kingdom is, it's the rule of God on earth. So that means many people will be risen to eternal life and maybe live forever, you know, with the, with the leaves from the tree of the garden of Eden and all of that. They won't have the rulership. They won't have all the good top blessings in the kingdom of eternal life. They won't be the ones that's ruling and reign. All right. But many will have eternal life, but not all is going to have the kingdom. So the kingdom is the commandments of Yah, believing in the Messiah, Yahweh Shammah. That's the kingdom. All right. Eternal life, either keeping the commandments of Yahweh or believing in Yahweh Shammah. Either one or the other can give you eternal life. Both of them together gives you the kingdom. Okay. I hope I, I thought that made that clear. And if you, you know the scripture, those who know the Bible really can in their head put scriptures together right away and see, yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. And you just go to John chapter three and uh, you'll see you get, you get born again. You can see the kingdom, but you're born of the water and the spirit. You, you get, there's a possibility you can enter the kingdom even after you're born again. He didn't say you get born again. You got the kingdom just, just from being born again. He didn't say that. All right. So Michael and his angels, who is this Michael? Well, this Michael, which means in Hebrew, who is like God. Remember one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. That word key word is like, similar to. All right. So Michael in Hebrew means who is like God, G-O-D or Allah higher. This son of man right here, this man child is like Yahweh Shai. It's like the son of man, but he isn't. This Michael, which he prints, is like God. That's what his name means. Guess who this is? This, that man child. Michael and the man child is the same person. That's what you want when this man child gets caught up in the Allah higher, he kicks Satan out of heaven, him and his angels. So what happened there? Well, we see Yahweh, Yahweh himself manifesting down here in the flesh 2,000 years ago, okay? He manifested in the flesh 2,000 years ago so that that was an eternal being came down to earth and lived and died in flesh, in human flesh. Well, another situation happens just like that, similar to that, not the same, this man child also came from eternity, from eternity. Who was he before he got down here, became a human being? He was this fellow right here. He was Michael, who was, which means who was like God. I was talking to somebody the other day who's a very well-known scholar in biblical theology as a Hebrew Israelite that basically knows who she is and, and she has a great audience. And um, basically one of her teachings was, was that Jesus was was the was the uh, angel of the Lord, 
All right. So let's let, let me tackle this right away too. The angel of the Lord uh, is not Jesus. All right. He's not Jesus. He's, he's like Jesus, like this name says right here. As a matter of fact, uh, this if you in Hebrew, you get the the Hebrew letters for Michael. And and also there's another word for angel in Hebrew, which also means messenger in Hebrew. And you look at those letters, they just switched around. So the word for angel in Hebrew and the word for Michael, the letters in, for Michael in Hebrew are just switched around. It's the same. It's the same thing. So when they go, when you talk about the angel of the Lord, basically you got the angel of the Lord right here. Here he is, Mike. This angel existed before everything was created. All right, and now I'm going to take you to uh, Enoch, the book of Enoch. All right, I read uh, most of my reading is through the regular books of scripture. But I also look through the apocryphal books, some that the Roman Catholic Church uh, kicked to the side, excuse me, that, he, that they kicked to the side for whatever reason, okay? All right. Uh, and I can say what I think the reason is. But Enoch chapter 48 says, uh, verse one, in that place I found a fountain of righteousness which never failed, encircled by many springs of wisdom. Of these all the thirsty drank, and were filled with wisdom, having their habitation with the righteous, the elect, and the holy. And that hour was this son of man, the son of Adam, right here it calls him. And that hour was this son of Adam invoked before Yahweh Sabio, and his name in the presence of the ancient of days. All right. So right here it has Yahweh Sabio, but it's like the father, and the ancient of days is like the son. So that's correct. All right. The, verse three. Before the sun and signs were created, before the stars of heaven were formed, before the sun, let me read that again, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of heaven were formed, his name was invoked in the presence of Yahweh Sabio. As support shall he be, and he shall be a light of nations. A light of nations. All right, he's called the son of Adam in this book of Enoch. He shall be the hope of those whose hearts are troubled. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him. It didn't say they were going to worship him. Now, I, I don't know about y'all, but I think Yahweh is worthy to be worshipped. All right. He, he went up to heaven and he became what he was before he came down here. He was to be glorified. He praised and worshipped. The angels fall down and worshipped him up in heaven. All right. Uh, right here it says this son of man that, uh, uh, that, was, that was around before everything was created. All right. They shall worship before him, okay? Shall bless and glorify him. Now you can bless and glorify a human being, all right? And shall sing praises to the name of Yahweh Savior. Therefore the elect and the concealed one existed in his presence before the world was created and forever. All right, let me read that again. Therefore the elect and the concealed one. So it's calling this person, this man child right here, it's prophesied about to come that in 2017, a sign in the heaven appeared concerning, all right? It's calling this man child, the elect and the concealed one. And he was around with the father and the son, with Yahweh, before the world and all things were created, all right? So he was this person right here, Michael, the archangel, all right? And uh, Satan fought and his angels, verse eight, and prevailed not, neither was that place found anymore in heaven. But this is how Rome is ruling. How are they ruling? Through Satan. Why did Christianity go into Rome? Because basically uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ was not the finishing part of the gospel. And I'm gonna show it to you in a second, but it's not the, the everlasting gospel. It's the gospel of good news to Israel but Israel, it was a stumbling block. It became a stumbling block to Israel and it became uh, the riches of the Gentiles. So the Romans got a hold to it. They put down their physical sword, which was really Esau, Jacob's twin brother, put down the physical sword and took up the Bible and the sword. <laughs> well, I can't say they totally, but the, they had Christian soldiers, all right? But they, they, they started ruling and reigning through this religion called Christianity. 
which is basically partly pagan. And it's a belief in the Messiah, and they even changed up his image. And it's a belief in him, but uh, they added pagan, pagan, their pagan religion that they always, you know, they always worship. Before they believed in Jesus, they added that in there too. So it's basically a pagan faith with, with a possibility of you worshiping Jesus and finding out the truth, okay? And through this, they've reigned over the world. And Satan has used this, this form of religion to, to rule the world, rule the nations. The, the roots of this Western rulership that America has goes back to this pagan religion called Christianity, of which Jesus apparently is a part of, all right? But this man child, who, who, whose name is also Michael, all right, kicks the devil, the dragon out of heaven. All right, and that place is found no more in heaven. So basically we're right at the time of this happening because look, this happened in 2017 in the stars. And that's when this sign appeared, all right, 2017, this is the prophecy. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. So that, when did that happen? 2017. So then you know that this man child was born into his purpose. So who is that man child? Could he be me? All right. All right. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan was deceived of the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Many people think the devil is cast out into the earth right now. No, the devil works as a prosecuting attorney in heaven. Before the, before the courts of God and judgment. And he's prosecuting mostly the Israelites, the original Israelites, all right, every day, all right? Uh, but he's gonna be kicked out. This, my, this, this man child goes up there and becomes who he was before he came to earth, Michael, all right? And kicks the dragon out. Comes down to earth, all right? And uh, let's see, cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice, saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Remember, it was as an accuser or a prosecuting attorney in heaven against whose brethren? Against the children of Israel, the brethren, our brethren. Who's writing this? John, who was John? A Hebrew Israelite, a Jew. So he's the accuser of the Israelites up in heaven, all right? He uses the Roman empire to do it, okay? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. That's the key. The reason why the devil is not really having great wrath right now, Christianity is able to flow all around the place. And meanwhile, when, when it first, the faith first started, the, the people that was of the Israelite faith, uh, that were Israelites, were the most persecuted people ever when they, when they was talking about Jesus, when they was carrying this gospel around. But why, isn't it, why is it that during the time of Rome, when people are got it all on TV and there's no problem, Okay, there's no problem now. Well, why is that? All right, because it's these people, all right? Satan knows it's this man child, if he ever found out, and this ever happened right here, his time is short. 2017, this sign shows up, okay? All right. And he knows what he has to do, but a short time he's kicked out. And he has great wrath, so he goes out to deceive the nations. He's not exactly trying to deceive the nations right now until this happens when he's kicked out. Now he's mad when he comes down having great wrath. This hasn't happened yet, but when it does happen, it's called by what people call the great tribulation that's going to come and try all nations. All right, because Satan's going to come down. He's going to basically, uh, he's going to possess, him and his angels are going to possess the people that are open to him. And they're going to, they're going to live through those people. And those people are going to do some very deceitful, evil, wicked, disastrous things to the earth. Okay. Because why? Because they know that time is short. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman. 
which brought forth the man child, which brought forth Jesus. No, remember Jesus, <laughs> Jesus gave the Gentiles some authority, gave them some power. Not that he was trying to get the wicked, bless the wicked, but because of his gospel, the Gentiles have prospered and Israel failed because his gospel was a stumbling block to, to our people, but it was a blessing. It was a, basically their rulership over the earth for the heathen, for the Gentiles, for Rome. All right. So who does he persecute? Does he persecute Jesus? No, he persecutes the man, the woman that brought forth. He can't persecute this man child. This man child is Michael now. All right. But he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Who's the woman that brought forth the man child? Israel. All right. He persecutes Israel during the great tribulation also. So she goes through great tribulation for a second. All right. Not long. Well, as soon as her travail happens, she brings forth her children, as Isaiah 66 says. Let's see that real quick. But before we go there, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, we were just mentioning in Daniel chapter 7, when it spoke about Babylon that had, it was a lion that had two wings of an eagle on his back. And the, eagle, the wings were plucked, and he was made to stand on his feet as a man, right? So what did those, what did those wings go to? Most likely here, two wings of a great eagle. And remember, Babylon was the drag, was the, was the lion. Mystery Babylon is in the latter days, all right? All right, so there's some stuff going on there, but we won't go that deep right now, all right? So we're gonna go to Isaiah 66 and show you this prophecy was already there. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, verse seven, before she travailed, she brought forth, see that? before the tribulation happened. So that man child, before the tribulation takes place, she is gonna be brought forth. That means he's gonna be born into his destiny uh, to be who he was before he was manifested in flesh. He's gonna be Michael again. He's gonna get caught up into Allah Hayam into his throne like Revelation 12 just said. So before she travailed, before the great tribulation, she brought forth a man child. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. There it is. All right. I said that before the time, but right here. So let me say that again. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. So this is that breaker in Micah chapter 2 that breaks up and goes up. He ascends. He's also the man child that gets caught up into Allah to his throne. It's the same thing right here in Isaiah chapter 66. So this is the latter day prophecy. So is this, is, you know, I look at this. Yeah, I told me I was this person years ago before I knew the scriptures very well. All right, I was on the milk at the time. And so I believe, okay, uh, yeah, I think I might be Elijah. I am kind of different. You know, Yah's, Yah's treating me different. I come out of a spiritual man that basically was really close to God and did some mighty things. You know, so I would not be surprised. You know, uh, if I'm this person, okay? But when he told me I was God, by me really lacking understanding about language and all of that, 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 uh, boy, that, that was it. I said, okay, I'm gonna have to leave, leave this stuff alone for a little while because this, is, this to me is kind of crazy. But I've come to believe that now that this is the truth through what Yah has shown me, through the confirmations and everything. And the reason why I'm teaching this is because when this man child starts proclaiming who he is, he catches on to it and he starts proclaiming who he is in the world and the nations, the nations fall. All right, before I go there, I'm gonna show this to you, to you and prove it to you. The nations start falling because it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ that causes all nations to crumble and fall. Like Daniel chapter two, the stone cut out without hands. Many think it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It isn't. Because remember all scripture in the Bible points toward that exact latter end, not the beginning, not the partial fulfillments, to the latter day. So that stone cut out with our hands that hits the image on the feet, the image of gold, the head of gold, chest of silver and all of that, um, that has miry clay and iron mixed together at the feet, all right? If you know the scripture, you know, go, if you don't know the scripture, go there and read it and then come back and rewind to this part, all right? But that stone that was cut out that becomes a great mountain and fills the whole earth, is basically the everlasting gospel. So the gospel of Jesus Christ and the everlasting gospel is part of each other. 
but it's not the same thing. Okay, and we're going to go there in a second. Before I, before that, I wanted to uh, read this next scripture. Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? So this is what's going to cause the nation of Israel to be born again at once. That man child. All right, that's called up. Now, think about it. Has any have have we seen a, a, a Messiah yet come out of Israel or, or some, somebody that the world could say, hey, that's the Messiah? All right. Because the Jews are waiting on their Messiah, but they also know that he hasn't arrived yet. If the Messiah hasn't come yet, then the nation hasn't been born yet. Back to his true identity. So right there, let me read that again. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Literally one day. Why? Because in one day, he's going to be called up to the throne. He's going to kick Satan out of there. All right? And guess who's coming back down after him? So he kicks Satan out of heaven, and he comes, he comes back down after Satan to get him again. All right? And, and we think that's really Yahweh Shai when it speaks about the Son of Man coming on the clouds with power and great glory, and he's going to gather the, the saints together. That's that son of, that's the same man right here, this man child, who is also called Son of Man by Yahweh Shai. So sometimes Yahweh Shai is talking about himself, calling himself the son of man. Sometimes he's talking about this man child right here. And he's hidden sometimes throughout the scriptures. But he's the one that the Jews are waiting on is called the Messiah, the Mashiach. So you go listen to some Jews talking about their Messiah that we know. They're waiting on this fellow right here. And this is the right one really right now at this time to be waiting on. Because Yahweh Shai ain't going to come back until this man does finish his, his work, the work that he's ordained to do. Yeah, Yahweh Shai ain't gonna come back here until this man does his work. But you might as well see this man as Yahweh Shai coming back. I'm gonna tell you right now, they favor, they look just alike. You might as well say it, you know, here's the man that was like, basically like the son of man. That doesn't mean just, you know, doing the stuff son of man, he looks like him, like him, okay? So shall a nation be made to bring forth in one day? Shall a, let's see, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travails, so, so Zion, the ones that still here, gonna go right when that tribulation, when Satan gets kicked out of heaven, the tribulation happens, all right? So as soon as that tribulation happens on the whole earth and she travails, just begins to travail too, she brought forth her children. So what does this mean? The 144,000 come forth. So she's born right at, right at the beginning of the tribulation. Yahweh Shai said this will happen. All right. I will keep you from the hour of temptation that's going to come upon all the earth to try those that dwell upon earth. Revelation, I think it's chapter, is it the church of Philadelphia? Because you've kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So right as soon as the tribulation happens, she brings forth her children. Not only the 144,000, all right? She brings forth uh, the other Israelites as well as the, the Gentiles that are born again, all right? And we see that in Revelation chapter seven, a great multitude of people, all tongues, languages, people, like, you know, all of that. All right, so there's, all, there's, some, there's some Gentiles, there's some strangers that's in that flock, that's in that fold. That might be Israelites in there too, but there's also heathen or Gentiles in that fold too. And they basically, are the same people, many of them are the same folks that was up under the altar in Revelation chapter six, wondering when Yah was gonna take vengeance on those that dwell upon earth because of their blood. And they were given white robes and told to wait a little while until, until others were slain just like them. Well, they get their white robes and then eventually when this man child does his work and Israel is born again, there's the resurrection. This man child is also that Michael, remember it says in that day, Michael should stand up in Daniel chapter 12. Michael, that, that great prince was standing for the children of thy people. There would have been a time of trouble such as never was since there was nation even to that same time. All right. And all that, all your people that are found written in the book shall be delivered at that day. And those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall arise some everlasting life, some the shame and everlasting death. Daniel chapter 12, I think it's one and two, verse one and two. So he becomes that Michael that basically does his work and causes the resurrection. This is also spoken about in Ezekiel chapter 37 speaking about the Valley of Dry Bones. When Yahweh speaks to, the, to Ezekiel and calls him, guess what he called him, son of man. Right, son of man, can these bones live? 
prophesy son of man. So while this man is prophesying, and that's even why I'm starting to do what I'm doing, but while this man is prophesying, things start to change. So if I am that man child, this Elijah that I heard years ago, this ministry that I'm doing right now, it's going into the atmosphere, it's going into uh, YouTube, Facebook, people as they listen and as they catch on to this, all right, whether they do it or not, catch on or not, it's getting out there, it's gonna shake up things, all right? Okay, and I just told you I was gonna go to this everlasting gospel that's in Revelation, <clears throat> chapter 14. And show you that the everlasting gospel is different than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the first part of Revelation 14, we see the 144,000 with a lamb standing on Mount Zion that with his father's name written on their foreheads. We're not gonna go into that right now at the moment, but remember we just spoke about uh, the other children that she brings forth as the tribulation happens. So right now the tribulation has to have happened. That, that son of man, that Michael has to kick Satan out of heaven already. This is what's going on after that happens. And I saw verse six, Revelation 14, verse six, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. That's the key. It didn't say the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why. Remember, this is Jesus, Yahweh, giving this message to John to give to the churches. Why didn't Yahweh put my gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, right here? Why did he put an everlasting gospel? Because this gospel, though both gospels are similar, and then the gospel of Jesus Christ is within the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel is the rest of the gospel that favors Israel, whereby Israel is saved, all of Israel. All right? So having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. So what happens when this gospel starts to be proclaimed, even by this angel? Now remember, the son of man is really an angel. Michael the archangel, all right? So what happened when this everlasting gospel is starting to be proclaimed, all right? In verse seven, saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment. Oh, judgment, there's the word. All of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of waters. So guess what happens? When this angel starts preaching the everlasting gospel to all nations, judgment is taking place now. That's the key. Now, remember the gospel of Jesus Christ and bring judgment on the nations. It just bought, it lifted the Gentiles up and made Israel jealous, which would provoke them to jealousy. And Israel fell. But the, this gospel, the everlasting gospel right here, and the proclamation of this gospel, especially by this angel, that angel has to be that man, the son of man that we was talking about. All right, Michael. The hour of judgment comes. Who does the hour of judgment come to? Especially, it says, worship him that may happen on earth to see in the fountains of water. Verse eight, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. So what causes Babylon, mystery of Babylon the great to fall? It's fallen twice, right? It's fallen, fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of wrath of the fornication. What causes this? The everlasting proclamation of the everlasting gospel because Satan is kicked out of the heavens, all right? But this man child has to be proclaiming this before he goes up there. Before he goes up there, he has to be proclaiming that already on earth. When he gets up there in the heavens, he's gonna be flying in the midst of heaven right here and proclaiming it to all nations. Now this angel, that we're talking about right here won't be somebody in the church system. All right, he would be hidden. All right, he would be hidden. All right, hidden. Isaiah 49. Listen, O isles, unto me, verse one. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, you people from far. Yahweh has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. That means that this person was around before he even got into the womb, okay? Verse two, and he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. 
In the shadow of his hand have he hid me. So yeah, I hid him. See, he made me a polished shaft in his quiver. Guess what? He hid him in his quiver. So who is this? This ain't Jesus, because Jesus, Yahweh, was not hit. He hid himself a few times to keep himself from the stones and rocks he was throwing at folks, throwing at him and everything. But that's not him. And he and said unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel. So he calls this man, O Israel, as a nickname, because he's from Israel. Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, who is the I right here? This person is being hidden. Basically, this is that son of man again right here, prophesying before he's even born, okay? Then I said, I have labored in vain. I spent my strength for naught and in vain. So that means that he, he lived like a regular human being and started trying to do his own thing and Yah would not bless him. I was telling my son today that this person would have to be a third person that his life is dedicated to basically doing and becoming that person that he would become, that he used to be. He would not be a person that would, Yah would allow to work a regular job and do regular stuff like everybody else in the culture. And this is what he seemed to be doing right here. He labored in vain. He spent his strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh and my work. That's the key. His work is with his God. So he found out that his work was with his God. Was that in 2017? Okay. And now say if Yahweh that formed me from the womb to be his servant to bring Jacob again. So here's the one that brings Jacob, the 12 tribes back. This is the one, this is the one Yahweh shall say that Elijah shall truly first come and restore all things. The key to that is, did Yahweh shall say that I will surely come and restore all things? No, he said Elijah would. So he calls this man Elijah. But this man is called by many names throughout the scriptures. He's called son of man, Elijah, uh, man child, Michael, all right? The angel of the Lord, yes, that's him too. He's the angel in Exodus chapter 23 that has Yahweh's name written in him. We get on that later. All right. So he was around during the first Exodus. All right. He was around before he even came in the flesh. And John even saw him in Revelation chapter 19 and, and bowed down to worship the angel. That was this man child that we're talking about right now. He bowed down to worship him. And he said, see, I do it now. I'm like, I'm thy brother and the prophets. Now, those who had the testimony of Jesus. Now, if John would have known that man, he wouldn't have bowed down to him. But obviously, the man looked like Yahweh. You and he's like the son of man, all right? So he had to warn him, don't do it. It's not me, all right? So that man, even before he was born, gave a message, helped give the, the revelation to John. Because he is the angel of Jesus, all right? So there's a lot of things. I'm spewing and I'm trying to go as fast as I can uh, and, and, and try to do it in such a way where people can catch it that he said that I, Jesus, has sent my angel at the, book, at the end of the book of Revelation, I sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. What angel is that that Jesus sent? That son of man, the very one that John tried to bow down and worship two times in the Bible. He told him not to do it, all right? This is those same fellow right here, the servant of the Lord that's talking in, in Isaiah chapter 49. So he chose him from the womb, formed him from the womb to be a servant to bring Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet will I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh. So even before Israel is gathered, Yah is watching over him and watching his growth. And he said he's going to get glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, but even before they get gathered. Yes, shall I right there. Yes, shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and, and my God should be my strength. And he said, it's a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation to the end of the earth. So basically, he's also going to be a light to the heathen, to the Gentiles. All right? That he might be his salvation to the end of the earth. Verse 7, thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despises. So this man right here won't be received easily. All right? Even right now, while I'm talking some of this, if the right people get a hold of this video and see that I see it, that Yah told me I was this man, they would despise me. Now, remember, Joseph was despised of his brothers for showing him those dreams that Yah gave, showing his brothers those dreams, which basically was saying that Joseph was going to be exalted and you guys are going to prostrate yourselves before him. And they hated him for it. All right, In the same way, this man is despised. Whether he basically knows who he is 
And when he finds out who he is, guess what? He still despises. All right, because of who he is. <laughs> so to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhor, the nation abhors him. You know, like as if he's an abomination. To a servant of rulers, kings shall see. All right, basically he's going to went through all this suffering, but eventually kings shall see and arise and also worship because of Yahweh that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. All right. So this is that son of man. This is the man that Yah said I was when I was 20 years of age. And so I think it's the proper time to come out now with this everlasting gospel and preach it from me, from my person, and see what Yah does. All right. Now he called Elijah the prophet because Elijah is basically going to tell you what's going to happen. But he also said that the comforter, when he came, which we know and we believe is the Holy Ghost, that comforter comes, he would basically lead us into all truth. All right. And the comforter started off as, you know, most people think the Holy Ghost is just a woo woo thing. All right. And I talk to my son all the time about these things. They think he's just a little floating around spirit. Now, really, before he was manifested in the flesh, yes. He's like a, just a spirit. Yah took the spirit off of that angel. All right. He took the spirit off of the angel. That's in Isaiah 63. Now, I'm going to show this to you. He took the spirit off of the angel and put it on people in the past. In the Old Testament, and he took that spirit off of the angel and put it on people in the New Testament. So basically, it's called the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is really an angel. I'm going to show it to you, Isaiah 63. All right. And all their affliction, Isaiah 63, verse 9, and all their affliction, he was afflicted, including this affliction in America, 400 years. He was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved him. So what's going to save us out of this situation? The same thing that saved us from the very beginning, the angel of his presence. So who is this angel of his presence? I might as well just say it to you right now. The angel of his presence, the same one we've been talking about, that son of man. That man child that the woman brings forth, 2017. All right. Michael, the archangel. All right. That's the angel of his presence. Save them. Is he like any other angel? No, he's different from the other angels. All right. Uh, in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and buried them and carried them all the days along. Who did? The angel of his presence. So the in this angel is the presence of Yahweh. Because remember, in Exodus chapter 23, it says Yahweh's name is in him. All right. But they rebelled and vexed. Who? Who did Israel rebel and vex? His Holy Spirit. Is that separate from this angel? No, it's the same thing. The topic is about the angel of his presence. So the angel of his presence is the Holy Spirit down here. How is that, how's that soul? How is he the Holy Spirit? All right, because Yah's name that's in this angel is holy, and that angel is a spirit. All right, so Yah is in this angel. His, his name is in this angel. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy and fought against them. Who did? His Holy Spirit, this angel of his presence. Then he remembered the days of old. Watch this. Then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought up out of the sea? with the shepherd of his flock, talking about Moses. Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? So Yah basically took this angel, this angel of his presence, put some of his spirit in Moses. And he called his call right here again, the Holy Spirit. But most people, you go to most churches of Rome that preach Christianity that's coming out of Rome, don't think and don't teach this, that that Holy Spirit is that angel. I haven't, I haven't heard him teach it. All right, 63, Isaiah 63, 12, that led them by the right hand of Moses and his, with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. That word right there, everlasting, is key. And remember, it's the everlasting gospel that causes the other nation to fall. So here we see this angel leading Israel to the promised land, causing nations to fall as they enter into the promise. All right, so that's what happens in the latter days. The nations fall at the everlasting gospel, all right? 
that led, verse 13, that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. As a beast goes down in the valley, the spirit of Yahweh, here he is again, that Holy Spirit, which is an angel, the angel of his presence. The spirit of Yahweh caused him to rest. So thou didst lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. So how did Yah lead his people through the wilderness? Through this angel right here, who also manifests in the flesh and becomes the son of man, or one like the son of man, Michael, the archangel, before he manifested in the flesh. All right. Okay. That's, so the word that we're reading, I could go throughout all of these scriptures and show you this angel, this man that would be manifested. So there's two people, just like Daniel chapter nine says, there's two messiahs. One comes after seven weeks, one comes after 60 and two, 60 and two weeks, which equals 434 years after the commandment goes forth to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. So there's two times. One of them is cut off, but not for himself. The other one is not cut off. The one that's not cut off doesn't die. He lives forever. All right, it doesn't die. That's the one that's coming to restore Israel. It doesn't die. He gets caught up to heaven. Like we say, it becomes Michael, the archangel. Okay. So before I'm going to let you go on after this one right here, Leviticus 16 speaks about what just happened recently in the Day of Atonement. We're in the seventh month, Tishri of 2021, and the Hebrew calendar that's we got the year, the count of five, seven. 82, I think it is, 5782 on the Hebrew calendar, 570, 5,782 years of life on the earth, man being on the earth, okay, all right, so, but we are in the month of Tishri, all right, uh, we're the first day after the last day of, last great day of uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, so we're on the 23rd of Tishri of uh, 2021 or 5,782. Okay, now on the day of atonement, which should be observed still with, with affliction, afflicting our soul, there's two goats in Leviticus 16, verse 7. The priest, which is Aaron, will take two goats and present them before Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. All right, what are these two goats all about? Because all of these feasts tell a story, just like the lamb that, that uh, on Passover that we were to eat roasted. All right. Uh, we would do that every year, all right? Yahawashai fulfills that, he's that land. So that means these two goats are representative of son. And these fall feasts has to do with the restoration of the children of Israel, starting with the Feast of Trumpets. And then you got the Day of Atonement, all right? The Day of Atonement basically means that Israel's sins and iniquities will be forgiven forever. And it hasn't happened yet, but we know there's two goats that, present, that are present to be sacrificed or offered before Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for Yahweh, and the other lot for the scapegoat. And remember the scapegoat in, in Hebrew is Azazal. Azazal, let me put that up here real quick. That's 5799 in the Strong's Concordance. All right, but it's the goat of departure right there. See that? It's the goat, goat of escaping. It's not a demon goat. It's a goat of escaping means that uh, this goat is going to cause Israel in the latter days to escape from their captivity. Now that should match up with Micah chapter two, speaking about the breaker breaking out and going up and the other sheep breaking out the gate. So it's a goat of departure, all right? But the other goat made it possible. There's two goats. One of them is sacrificed. Let's see if we're going to read it. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which Yahweh's lot fell and offer him for a sin off. So we can see Yahweh Shai in this right here, even though this was fulfilled in the spring feast of Passover. We see also he fulfills with his sin offering, the, uh, the, uh, the Day of Atonement sin offering, one of the goats. He's Yahweh's goat. It makes sense. It's calling this goat Yahweh, which that's Yahweh Shai. So who is Yahweh Shai? He's Yahweh. All right. <laughs> there it is. All right. But the goat, verse 10, but the goat on which the lot failed to be the a goat of escaping or scapegoat shall be presented alive. See that? Before Yahweh. So remember, the Son of Man is caught up into Allah and to his throne. So he's going to be presented alive before Yahweh. Which goat is it that makes the atonement? It, it doesn't say the sin offering makes the atonement. Notice that? 
example right here, it says this goat should be presented, the, the other goat, the scapegoat, should be presented alive before Yahweh to make an atonement with him. So this will be in the latter days. So the fulfillment of the day of atonement, we are in that time period. All right, and I'm saying right now that if I am that goat, and that goat represents me, we are in that day, all right? We are in that day of the everlasting gospel starting to be proclaimed also. So this goat makes the atonement and to let him go for a scapegoat in the wilderness. Remember the woman goes into the wilderness in Revelation chapter 12, all right? She goes into the, she has two wings of a great eagle. So this goat is gonna oversee Israel and their restoration to get them back into the wilderness so they can go into the holy land again. All right. So let's see some more of that. Uh, and remember the goat that was sacrificed, the blood. All right. Verse 16, verse chapter 16, verse 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. And do with the blood of that, do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, in which the bullock was for him first and his family, so he could be right before he did this ceremony. All right, so he would uh, sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. Now, this mercy seat was the covenant of Israel at the time, but the mercy seat is no longer going to be the covenant of Israel in the latter days. This man child, the one we're talking about, is going to be the covenant. All right. He's just sprinkling it up on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So that means that that goat of escaping is going to have Yahweh's blood placed upon him in the heavens, like a mercy seat did, like he did with the mercy seat. Verse 16, and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, because of their transgressions and all their sins, so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There should be no man in the tabernacle of congregation when he go up in to make an atonement, in which there was no man up there when Yahweh Shai rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. All right. There should be no man in the tabernacle of congregation when he go up in to make an atonement for the, in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. All right. He should go out to the altar and make an atonement for it with the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat on the horns of the altar. Verse 19, and he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it from the uncleanliness of the children of Israel. And when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Verse, what is that? Verse 20. See, now it's time to deal with the live goat. Remember, the live goat is not going to die. He represents somebody who won't die in the latter days. And Aaron shall lay both hands upon the head of the live goat. And Aaron represents Yahweh Shai as a high priest, a uh, high priest, a uh, Melchizedek high priest now. So when he does this in the heavens, it's gonna, he's going to be a Melchizedek high priest. Because on earth, he would not be able to be priest because there's a law for those on the earth, the, of the like, Levite priesthood of the house of Aaron. So Yahweh Shai would not be able to be priest down here. But he would do this in the heavens as a Melchizedek priest. All right, he shall lay both hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him the iniquities. Notice it didn't say sins. So the sins have already been dealt with with the, with the offering of the body of Jesus. But what hasn't been dealt with is the iniquities. All right, the iniquities. That means after you got your sins cleansed, you're still doing and breaking God's law. You saved, you're gonna have eternal life, but you're still doing this right here, iniquities. So you... So he will confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the live goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities into a land, all their iniquities into a land not inhabited shall let go the goat in the wilderness. So basically that's two goats. The two goats are basically those two messiahs that's talked about in the book of Daniel chapter nine. Where that one comes after seven weeks, one comes after 16, two weeks. One has already died. This other one is yet coming up on the scene to do his work. When he does his work, Israel will be delivered. 
Satan will be kicked out of heaven. The everlasting gospel will be proclaimed. The nations will fall. All right. And there you have it. Now, again, like I said, there's more. I'm going to talk more and teach more on this because a lot of mysteries in this right here. And I'm going to let this Bible study go for now. Um, but again, like I said before, uh, the reason why I'm speaking on this is because of who Yah said I was early on, 30 something years ago. And he's proved it to me. All right. Uh, the major thing is, and I'm not trying to make anybody believe in that person, but I'm basically putting Yah to the test. All right, here, okay, Yah, you told me these things. You wouldn't let it go. Now you've taught me all of this. Now it's time to see what you're going to do. I'm really willing and ready for you to use me. I'm right here. And he, the next thing he said, go ahead and start teaching. And it's a hard thing to teach something like this for me. All right, I can feel the presence of, you know, the enemy, the enemy spirits that's restraining, trying to restrain me and withhold me from teaching. All right. So here I am. And uh, I want just to say to everybody that watches this video, go and read these things for yourself, pray about it. If you feel like as if, yeah, it's not talking to me, I'm crazy as a Betsy bug and all of that stuff, pray for me. All right. And we'll see whether this is true or not. But you don't really want to uh, fight against something that's really true. But if it's true, praise Yahweh because the, guess what? The angel of Yahweh is on the scene for the house of Israel. Not only for them, for the Gentiles and to be a light to the Gentiles for those that believe also. The Jews that's been waiting on their Messiah is here. Their Messiah is that live goat, that son of man, that Michael the Archangel. All right. But we want to make sure they believe not only on that Messiah, that we want to make sure they know that Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. Like we just said, that, that Lord's goat is really Yahweh's goat. That's Yahweh himself. That sacrificed his life 2,000 years ago. He did not do it to take over our dominion down here because he made man to have dominion on the earth. He did that so we could get our dominion back. Okay. All right. So even though that live goat had to start in eternity, uh, Enoch 46 says that, uh, that he was like a man and like an angel in eternity. All right. There I beheld Enoch 46. I beheld the ancient of days whose hair was white like wool. And with him another whose countenance resembled that of man. His countenance was full of grace like one of the holy angels. All right, so that's, it's like Yah knew from eternity he was going to use this man to basically be a human being, all right, and to basically be the Adam that Adam should have been. So he's called the son of Adam right here in the book of Enoch. Okay. And so we get our dominion back, and we're going to get it back. Praise Yah. Wish everybody blessings. I'm going to be posting more on this. If you love this, uh, subscribe to it. And and watch out uh, if, it's, if it's Facebook, you know, uh, check out my Facebook page and, and Facebook uh, personal page and keep your eye on it for more videos. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, all right? Shalom.